Greetings students and welcome back to another video on fractional calculus. In this lesson we're going to talk about the Caputo definition of the fractional derivative and compare the results that we get from differentiating according to the different definitions of the fractional derivative we came up with last time. But before we get to the Caputo definition, let's recall our other three definitions of the fractional derivative. If I have a function f of x that's written as a sum of a whole bunch of exponentials, then according to the Liouville definition, its fractional derivatives will look like this. When I differentiate e to the kx n times, the coefficient on the x, the k, comes down n times. So if I differentiate an exponential a fractional number of times alpha or a, the k will come down with a power of a. The next definition we talked about in the last video was the Fourier definition. So if I have a function f of x defined as a sum of sines and cosines, then the fractional derivative of f in the order a will also be a sum of sines and cosines but with two wrinkles. The first is that the coefficient of x will come out with a power of a because we differentiated f a times after all. The second wrinkle is that the sines and cosines will be phase shifted by a times pi over 2. Remember that for their first derivative sine and cosine are shifted by pi over 2 to give cosine and negative sine respectively. So for the a-th derivative it follows logically that sine and cosine are shifted by a times pi over 2. And the third definition we talked about last time is the Raymond definition. Basically, if I have a function f of x as the sum of a bunch of polynomial terms in x, then differentiating f to the fractional order a will give me this expression. Let's now apply each of these definitions to find the fractional derivative of order a to a function f of x that is a constant. If we apply the Liouville definition, then writing my constant function as a sum of exponentials means that my k is just zero, and so according to the Liouville definition, the derivative of f will be zero. This is, of course, what we like to see. Similarly, if we apply the Fourier definition of a fractional derivative, then the fractional derivative of a constant function will be zero, because the k is going to be zero when I express my constant function in terms of sines and cosines. However, when we apply the Raymond definition of the fractional derivative, then we find that the fractional derivative of a constant function, which would correspond to a k of zero again in the Raymond definition, the fractional derivative in the order a of a constant function would look like this expression on the right when I substitute my k as zero. Recall from the properties of a gamma function that the gamma function evaluated at one is just one. It's the same as zero factorial. Therefore, the a-th order fractional derivative of a constant function according to the Raymond definition is given by 1 over gamma of 1 minus a times x to the negative a. So what this means is that the Raymond definition of a fractional derivative doesn't give me zero when I evaluate the fractional derivative of a constant function. We would normally expect a zero when we take the derivative of a constant function, but we don't get that here, at least with the Raymond definition. We're okay though with the Liouville and Fourier definitions. So now I'm at an impasse, and the question I have to ask myself is that what can I do to help myself differentiate polynomial functions, but also maintain the consistency with the fact that the derivative of a constant function should be zero? Well, I can certainly do something, and that something involves developing the Caputo definition of a fractional derivative. And bear with me on this one because it's a bit complicated. Basically, if I have a function f of x, and I want to find its fractional derivative in the order alpha, an order which lies between the natural numbers n and n minus 1, with the n not included in this interval, then I can write the fractional derivative of f in the order alpha as the following expression, where the numerator inside the integral is the nth derivative of f evaluated at the dummy variable t. And remember that the value of n is key here. n is the natural number that is above the fractional order alpha. So if alpha were 2.5 or even 2.4, for example, n would be 3. So the Caputo definition basically allows me to find a fractional derivative of some function by taking its natural number derivative, which we already know how to compute, and then compute some integral involving that natural number derivative to get our fractional derivative. Let's use this Caputo definition to find the fractional derivative of a constant, so f equals some constant c. You probably know from basic calculus that the nth derivative of f, the nth derivative of a constant, is just zero, so the numerator in this integral is just zero, which makes the fractional derivative of f equal to zero by the Caputo definition. So we've established that the Caputo fractional derivative of a constant is zero, meaning we've dealt with the inconsistency we were getting with the Raymond definition. That's already a plus, but 
what if our function was expressed as a sum of polynomial terms like so, and this function we already pre-specify as a non-constant function? Well, we showed in our introductory video on fractional calculus that the nth derivative of this function, n again being a natural number, can generally be written as this expression. If we evaluate this at some arbitrary variable t, then this is what we end up with. Let's now plug this into the Caputo definition of the fractional derivative, to end up with this really long expression. Now the integral of the sum of multiple functions is the sum of their integrals, which means we can move the summation outside the integral along with this gamma coefficient since it's just a constant. Let's now make a variable substitution where we let t equal a new variable u times x. Let me make it clear, we're going to end up integrating with respect to u in the substitution. x is effectively a constant. So if t is x times u, dt is just x du. Also, when t is 0, u is 0, and when t is x, u is 1, so our new integration limits become 0 and 1. Let's substitute all of this into our integral to get the following. We'll now move this term in the denominator to the numerator, just by switching the sign of its exponent to get this. Let's now separate the x and the u to get the following integral expression, where we've already combined the powers on all the x terms. Because x is just a constant as far as this integral is concerned, we can take it out of the integral to get the following. Now does this integral remind you of anything? Well, if you've seen my video on the beta function, you'll see that this integral is just the beta function of k minus n plus 1 and n minus alpha. You'll also recall from that beta function video that we can write this beta function in terms of the gamma function as the product of the gamma functions of the arguments of the beta function divided by the gamma function of the sum of those arguments. So if we substitute this expression into our Caputo fractional derivative, this is what we end up with. We can cancel the common gamma terms as I've done here to finally end up with the following expression for the Caputo fractional derivative of a polynomial series. Now this happens to be the exact expression as the Raymond definition of the fractional derivative. So the Caputo definition of the fractional derivative is pretty great. You get the consistency with the Raymond definition as far as polynomial derivatives are concerned, and you also have the added benefit of ensuring that the Caputo fractional derivative of a constant is zero, which should make intuitive mathematical sense. Anyway, that should do it for this video. We've shown the Caputo definition of fractional derivatives, and we've also shown that for the same function, the fractional derivatives can be different depending on the definition you use, just like they are here for the constant function. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.